Okay, hi, I'm here with Devin Keenan today, and uh, we're going to talk about glycation factor. And uh, so you are Dr. Ellis's daughter. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we're going to try and get some perspective, just like a little bit of insight, more of like the layman's term on actually what glycating it means and all of that. So uh, what in like, again, like simplified terms is glycation? Glycation in simplified terms is basically something that happens when you live a high carb lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so basically our bodies are made of proteins and when you eat a real high carb diet those proteins bind together and as my father says you basically glue yourself together. So the longer you live a high carb lifestyle the more glycated or glued together you become okay. and that's when you end up having issues that um, appear, you know, diseases. Uh, poor eyesight, you know, all kinds of things happen right. once you become glued together. <laughs> okay. And so uh, I guess like you really did cover like the main thing about like the glyc when you glycate is that your body starts to like at almost attack the proteins that you're, you're made up of, mm -hmm. which is what makes it so terrible. Yeah. And that it's, it's a really serious problem. And I think a lot of people since they don't really know a whole lot about it and that there's like uh, a bunch of science about it and it's a newer, I guess, theory on or, or every, or, you know. So uh, what can you do to, like, I guess, uh, halt the process or at least slow it down? Or um, low carb. Yeah. I mean, that's the simple answer. Mm -hmm. um, if you kind of readjust the way you eat and burn fat for fuel versus sugar for fuel, you're not going to have to deal with the glycation process because that's caused by the high carb diet. Right. Since basically our whole body is made up of proteins, I mean our skin, our eyes, everything. So as you eat the high carb diet and glue your whole body together, that's when the aging process takes place. And that's what they're seeing a lot with um, like people with diabetes because mm -hmm. that's caused by high you know, high carb diet, right. and then people get diabetes at a younger age, and then that's basically the definition of diabetes is rapid aging, right. and that's, you know, people are having problems at age 30 yeah. instead of age 80 now, so it's something that's really affecting people's health. It's not just a matter of how you feel, it's a matter of, you know, these early onset, you know, early onset Alzheimer's, yeah. all those things that are happening at an earlier age now are because our society eats the way they do. Right. So you're essentially, you know, causing your own body to have these issues mm -hmm. earlier just by the way you eat. Right. And the whole point of it is a lot of those diseases there's no reason for them. Mm -hmm. The medical community doesn't know why people have Alzheimer's. They don't know right. how to fix those things. And it is as simple as the diet. Mm. And a lot of those diseases have become a lot more prevalent since our country has oh, yes. gone <laughs> the direction that it's but gone. Eating, eat, eat, we eat carbs. Exactly. That's, okay. So it's basically, I mean, it is a new term, you know. No. It's well, that's not true. It's not a new term. <laughs> yeah. It's something that is not talked about, mm -hmm. and that's why we kind of want to get the word out there that people can live healthier and still enjoy what they eat. Right. I mean, most people, if you, if I told you you could eat bacon and a cheeseburger every day, wouldn't you be happy? Well, yeah, with exactly. That? I mean, you know, a lot of people think that they need to eat fruits and salads to be healthy, but in reality, they're actually harming themselves. Right. So it's just a matter of kind of teaching people that you can actually eat really good food, high fat food, and you're going to be healthy because of it. Right. And you're not going to have to deal with, you know, gluing yourself together. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, that's really, that's the simplified way to think of glycation is just that you are gluing yourself together. Right. Because you're binding all of the proteins in your body. Mm -hmm. and. That, I mean, anything, simple things like skin elasticity, like older people who yeah, they you know, lose that over bump time. into a table and their skin breaks. It's all those types of things that build up because your body just 
becomes inelastic. Right, yeah. And I think uh, you said earlier that also like uh, there are completely preventable diseases that people suffer from that can be fixed as long as you adhere to this uh, low carb diet mm -hmm. and that would be again yeah diabetes mm -hmm. and then uh, a lot of things say again like a lot of liver function can be lost when you have a really high carb diet mm -hmm. and that's something that you know is again completely preventable as long as you adhere to like the yeah and I think the part of it too is a lot of the diets that have been out there with low carb it's too strict and mm -hmm. that's why people fail at it because it goes too far the opposite direction. So instead of you know eating a slice of bread instead of two slices of bread, they completely cut up bread and right, yeah. they can't handle it and then they fail. Yeah, and, then and they, they gain like more that. weight and then they're unhealthy. Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of teaching people that it doesn't have to be as extreme as all the low carb diets that have been out there. Right, okay. And that's why people haven't had success with it. Mm. And I like, I, I'm glad that you brought that up because I think something that a lot of people here, because the way, again, Dr. Ellis talks is he says that he's not eaten a piece of fruit or mm -hmm. vegetable in like, I think he says like, like four or five years. Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> to, to hear him say that and have him be the one who's telling you like how to you know, stick to this diet and then to actually hear someone who's been doing it since, you know, mm -hmm. for as long as you have. And then it makes it a lot easier to say that you know, it's, it's okay if you're going to eat carbs. Just again, you try to, you want to keep it down to he said about 60 to 80 Grams. Yeah, I try and stick to 60 to 80. Um, I am 26 and a half right now, and I didn't listen to what I listened to what my dad said, but I didn't actually start following it until about three years ago. Mm -hmm. And I feel completely different. Yeah. Um, I don't have the midday crashes that I used to have. Right. Yeah. Um, like the sugar crashes, and I lost 10 pounds doing nothing else except going to a low carb diet. Right. So I finally started to listen to what he had to say, mm. and it makes sense. When you actually like look at the science behind it and simplify it, it makes sense. And the fact that you know I'll still eat a slice of pizza, yeah. but I'll eat the cheese and then a little bit of the crust, and I'll have you know a sandwich, but I'll eat one slice of bread instead of two. Once you start to know your limits and you know the like carb what, yeah. counts, you know, a slice of bread has about 14 grams of carb. I know that now. So you can kind of plan it into your day where you don't have to be extreme and cut out every single carb yeah. because nobody can do exactly. that. Nobody wants to do that. Mm. You know, I'll still eat cake, but I'll have two bites instead of a whole <laughs> yeah. piece. Yeah. So once people realize that you can still have carbohydrates, because we all enjoy yeah. carbohydrates. Can't get away from it, for and, sure. And, you know, but you can still be healthy. Mm -hmm. So you can still live a healthy lifestyle, as I call it. I don't consider it a diet, I consider it a lifestyle. Yeah. And, but you can still enjoy some of the things that you did before, just not in excess. <laughs> exactly. Most people do. All right. And then um, another thing I wanted to hit on was um, the fact of when you first started and you talked about like how difficult it is mm -hmm. and I think it would be good to hear someone talk about like what it what it feels like mm -hmm. at first especially when you if you again if you do it as a slower process it's a lot easier mm -hmm. and then you won't also won't have that you know re regressing back to right. you know eating normally yeah. so what was what was that like for you well basically when you switch from a high carb diet to a low carb diet your body has to transition from burning sugar as mm -hmm. fuel to fat as fuel so while you go through that transition process it's a tiring process because yeah. um, your body literally ha is transitioning how it's burning fuel so for a while you feel like you're you know you're exhausted because you don't have right because your body's you're changing, kind of in yeah. transition time so you can I mean you can do it slower where you cut the carbs mm -hmm. you know at a lower rate um, where you won't have that extreme but there's you're gonna have a couple days yeah and was. that's you know, people go through those couple of days and they don't know what to do, so they revert right back. Right. So once people realize that that is part of the process, mm -hmm. you are going to have a couple of days where you're completely exhausted, but then you're going to come out of that on the other side and you're not going to have, you know, mid-afternoon sugar crashes. Right, yeah. You're going to feel better throughout the whole day. 
So it's definitely, it's tough for a couple days, but once you get through that and your body's then burning fat for fuel, yeah. you're gonna you know, lose weight and feel better because you're not gonna have to eat as much food. Right, and then you talked about that also now that you have, you have changed and it's been, again, what do you say, like? Um, it'll be three years in October. Right, and you, you find yourself, you don't have like those cravings now and you're not like, you're not like oh my gosh, I need a piece of bread. Mm -hmm. or, so you're not having No, I, I have cravings for cheeseburgers <laughs> <laughs> instead of bread. But. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the other great thing about it is you get hungry when your body's actually hungry. Right. Because with when you're high carb, you're constantly hungry because you're burning through that sugar. Yeah, the sugar fat. just go. So when you're on a high fat diet, you you know you eat a meal and it sustains you for a really long time, and then I'll get to the point where I'm completely starving, mm -hmm. and I'll eat you know cheeseburger, bacon and eggs, or something like that, and then you're full again for right. a longer period of time. So you, you get hungry when you actually need to be hungry. It's not a constant thing mm -hmm. that happens every day. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, another thing I want to talk about is like a kind of like a normal day routine, I guess, of like what you would eat throughout a day. And like I, I never really talked about this or anything, yeah. but uh, just kind of think about like I guess what you like what you would eat for breakfast and then mm -hmm. like lunch and kind of walk someone through a, a day. Um, I tend to eat two meals a day instead of three and then it all it really depends you know on the weekends mm -hmm. I'll eat breakfast during the week I typically will do lunch and dinner and you know it can be I'm a big breakfast for dinner person yeah. so typically you know we'll do scrambled eggs with some American cheese mixed in and either some sausage or bacon and then I will have a slice of bread on the side mm -hmm. um, and then I eat a lot of you know, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, bacon, um, and then snacks, like before, you know, if I needed a snack, I'd get potato chips yeah. or something along those lines, where now I'll have a spoonful of peanut butter or a couple slices of American cheese. So you kind of, you can find those different yeah. snacks too that are lower carb. You can still cater to having having a snack, whereas exactly. normally you think, oh, now that I'm on this low carb diet, I can't have, mm -hmm. I have to cut out all snacks, but there still are yeah. things that you can do. Yeah, I mean, a spoonful of cream cheese is yeah. a good snack. Like you find things like that that you can still enjoy when you're craving something mid-afternoon, but it doesn't have to be, you know, a handful of potato chips that are gonna mess up your whole schedule <laughs> for the day. Yeah, and your shirt usually. Uh, yeah. Is so exactly. Good. Yeah. So. And then, um, and then you find yourself now that you, do you feel like you're getting tired still? Or like, uh, I eat kind of a regular diet, I mm -hmm. guess it would be a, a higher carb mm -hmm. diet. And yeah, I do, I had that, that crash about the mid-afternoon, you're just like, man, I just need the day to be yeah. done. And now do you find yourself like, do you feel cr like you do crash now? Or you? No, no, I don't have the crashes anymore. I remember I used to crash at about 11 o'clock every day. Mm. And you get that. It's, I always say it's so strange, but it's almost that like out of body experience. You kind of feel like you're floating around. <laughs> yeah. It's just that weird exhaustion mode, but you know you have to keep going for mm -hmm. a couple more hours, and I don't have to deal with that anymore, yeah. which is great. Yeah. And it's funny because I, um, if I go over my carbs for the day, I don't sleep at night. Oh, really? So I always say that's like my punishment <laughs> because uh -huh. I'll get a sugar rush mm -hmm. at like 4 o'clock in the morning. So if I'm ever, you know, trying to cheat a little bit, I'll be like, just relax because you're not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. So.